Hey guys, Cindy Williams here from Curse on Vacation. I have the most amazing guest for our live stream today, Coach Jenny. Good morning, Coach Jenny. Good morning. I want to do your full introduction because first of all, you have amazing, just amazing stuff going on, but you are the inner critic expert sought after the, the sought after coach for solopreneurs when to turn to no matter what they do when they can't seem to get out of their own way, which we run into all the time. You work with super ambitious entrepreneurs whose brilliant plans have been thwarted by their own inner critic for the last time. Like when they're ready, enough is enough, right? <laughs> you help silence that limiting voice so that you can kind of stop squandering, they can stop squandering their power and potential and get on with the business of changing the world. Your work has also been a catalyst for clients to help launch new businesses, publish their first books, negotiate career leaps, adventure the world, and more. And you know we love adventuring the world at Careers on Vacation. So yes. welcome. So Thank happy to have you here. Oh, I'm so thrilled. And thank you so much for asking me because I know that you and I have a lot in common, especially a obsession with Disney. So I'm super excited to talk to you today. Yes, absolutely. And I want to really start by talking about your book for a couple of reasons. We run into all the time in the travel industry we're, it's, we talk about solopreneurs. So our industry has changed a lot over the 20 years. Like I started in the 90s. Like I used to be able to handwrite tickets. That's how <laughs> I've been in the industry. But from that place to the evolution of now people running online businesses, it's gone from where you have community and you work in a travel agency like a brick and mortar to now people have the, the beauty of being able to run their businesses from home but that also can be very secluded and people get stuck and they can't, it's hard for them sometimes to kind of seek out those tools and resources to get their business to the next level because they don't know what to believe. They don't know where to go. They don't know how to bridge the gap sometimes in that inner critic, which is what your book talks about. You know, how do you get past it? So tell us about Hilda. Let's just start there. Yeah. For people so, who don't know Hilda, just give them the whole story about her. Whole... Book, not to show off the book, but to show you an image of Hilda. So Hilda is the name that I give for the inner critic. It's my playful take on that voice in your head who walks around with you through every experience you have to tell you how much you suck. That's her job. Her whole job is to keep you small and safe and cozy in your comfort zone. And the way she goes about it is really kind of evil, right? She wants to fill your head with doubt and self-consciousness and get you to second guess yourself. <clears throat> if you would listen to Hilda, you're never going to fail again because you're never going to do anything risky. The only problem is you'll never succeed again, but she's totally cool with that, right? <laughs> if you just listen to Hilda, you will be safe and snug in your comfort zone, feeling really bad about yourself and eating bonbons. So, <laughs> Right. In the entrepreneurial space, you know, as solopreneurs, like you said, we're online now. And online comes with so many wonderful blessings. You're right. We can change the world from behind a 13-inch computer screen. But the there's a lot of ramifications we didn't see coming. Like when you were working in a travel agency, you were probably focused on the people within your travel agency. Now, when you're online, it's so easy to let Hilda compare you to other people. Mm, that's a good one. Everybody else doing everything. You, you can't make a decision about how to price something until you've done 3,000 hours of market research on what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many things that have happened in the online entrepreneur space mostly good, <laughs> but so many things that have been good for Hilda of like, ooh, I can tool with her brain this way and hold her back. Yep. And I love what you said about comparing yourself to others because that's a recipe for disaster. I call it feed envy. Like yeah. you're like, okay, I know Cindy is doing this huge travel business. I know her clients. So people will go and follow everybody in their feeds and they'll be like, okay, I'm just, can I figure out how to, and they'll try to like figure it out on their own, but it never quite comes together. But that can be a destructive place because it makes them feel bad. Like, why can't I figure it out? Or why can't I be that person? Why can't I have that? Yeah. But it's really, it's that Hilda switch, right? Where it's like, well, get the resource, do the thing, you know, do the thing you need to do to kind of move yourself forward. Or how do you break that pattern? So 
let me ask you just from your perspective, because you you're like the badass coach for getting people past this block. Like my thing is not that I'm like, when you're ready to work, let's roll up our sleeves and get going. Like I can't always get everybody past their block. Like I would love to be able to do that. That's your area of expertise, which is why I wanted to be on the show today. <laughs> so, you know, people get in that space and they feel frustrated. Some of them feel very sad because they're like, I know what I need to move my business forward, but I'm afraid. I'm scared. I'm I don't, you know, am I going to the return on investment question, right? And how am I going to, and it's hard because they don't have other people to ask, or they are just working from that 13 inch computer from home going, I don't know what to do. Like, how do I get there? So when they're in that place of fear and being stuck, like what is, what's like one or two suggestions you can give them to kind of move that space forward in their mindset? Well, two things pop to mind immediately. First is recognizing what the real problem is, okay? Because when you're sitting in that space, you're thinking, well, the problem is Cindy already said that, so I don't need to say that. Or my competitor already covered that, so nobody's going to want to hear it from me. And we <clears throat> project the problem as this thing outside of us. Mm -hmm. When the problem is actually that we are obeying Hilda. We are buying into her BS. We're yeah. buying into the negative messages she's been playing on repeat designed to hold us back. We're buying into that. And when you recognize that you're buying into that because it's keeping you safe and not having to face your fears, <clears throat> you're 50% of the way there. And this is, you know, this whole Hilda thing is ridiculous. I want to be very upfront about that. That's by design. I know it's yeah. ridiculous. But when you decide that that thought isn't yours, a thought that you probably have heard from your Hilda is, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. Everybody's heard that one, right? Yep. That's not your thought, it's Hilda's. When you mm -hmm. decide to play along with me <laughs> and attribute this to a, a blonde cartoon character who lives in the back of your brain, <laughs> then what you're doing is you're creating objectivity. You're yeah. saying, I reject that thought, that's not mine, it belongs to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then when you have that objectivity, you can say, is it true? Yeah. Who do you think you are? Mm, let me tell you who I think I am. You know, I'm somebody who's earned the right to have this opinion, or I'm somebody who is a badass coach who can help you get out of your own way, right? Whatever mm -hmm. it is, you can be able to say, who do I think you are? Let me explain that to you. Instead of feeling like, who do I think I am? Oh, I'm nobody. Yeah. I'm not worthy and all the stuff that goes on. So the first thing I want you to do is recognize that Hilda exists even though it's totally silly, but recognizing that Hilda exists, that it's a thing, and start attributing all of those negative messages to her. So that's the first step. That's 50%. Yeah. Yeah, because it's the stories we tell ourselves. And we're, you know, that's Hilda in terms of like, once you can separate that and go, oh my gosh, should I even realize that that dialogue has been going around in my head for years and years and years. So I love that being able to kind of separated. Kristen, uh, Kristen, I love you. She said, damn Hilda. I know, <laughs> right? Well, that's the thing. We all are walking yeah. through life with these thoughts and almost everybody thinks we're the only ones that think that. Yeah. Think about that for a minute. Everybody thinks we're the only ones that think that. Yeah. So we're wrong. Yeah. Everybody has this Hilda. She comes with birth. Like she shows up with the diaper bag and she follows yeah. us through life collecting like a demented documentarian every negative message she can use against us. Mm -hmm. And she's going to show up with a little documentary screening every time you're about to do something that matters. Yeah. And so if you can start raising your awareness to when she shows up, you're going to be better. The yeah. second tip I want to give you is that when Hilda's at her loudest, that's a good thing. And that probably sounds ridiculous. No, nope, I, I know where you're going with it. Say it. <laughs> when I started writing this book, I thought we were going to slay the beast. Let's kill Hilda. Mm -hmm. But no, the truth is when she's loudest, it's when you're onto something. Yeah. You're doing something that matters to you and to your audience. And so as soon as Hilda's losing her mind saying, wait a minute, I'm sorry, but like, you're going to embarrass your mother if you keep doing this. And, 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 and you're not really ready for this. And maybe you need to go do some more research before you launch that campaign and um, no, you can't finish that because if you do, like when she's in that panic mode to shut you down, panic, yeah. right? That means you're doing something that matters. So keep, yeah. That. And you're about to come into this next evolution of yourself. God, I love that so much. Cause I have something on my plate like that right now. So I'm just going to share with everyone. I hadn't planned to do this, but 
I had been contacted recently to start doing some interviews with like TV shows in Austin on travel. And I'm like, oh my God, like I do these videos all the time, but it's in my setting and in my box. And I know that I should do it. And it's even on my list of things like to accomplish this year. But now that it's here and someone's like, yes, I have an interview. They want to interview you. Let's get dates scheduled. I'm like, you know, so I have a call on Monday to kind of talk through that, but I'm nervous about it, but I know I should be doing it to move my business forward. So whatever that thing is, it's like when you feel that rising, you're like your passion isn't going to go away. It's going to keep bothering you until you give in, or you're going to continually live in that state with Hilda where she's, you know, bringing you down and keeping you in that spot. But you're, when you're really passionate, but I mean, you tell me if you think I'm wrong, but if, when you're really passionate about doing something that whether it's running this badass travel agency from home or whether it's writing your book or whether it's whatever you want to accomplish, make buttons, I don't care, whatever your life dream is, it, it's if it's really your passion and your bliss, it's not going to go away. It's going to keep knocking at the door and then, you know, Hilda's there locking it or whatever, but it's like, it doesn't go away. And what happens is you get on this hamster wheel where you're like, oh, let me just stay in status quo, stay in status quo. And people stay there for years Right. Well, it's because I think we all assume once we find our passion, all the fear will just melt away and suddenly yeah. we're gonna feel like Oprah. Right? Like because we yeah. all see we all see Oprah it's it's like fingers, this yes. thing, and then the pixie dust shows up. No, that's not true. When you find what you're really passionate about and you're really excited to make happen in the world, yeah, fear is going to show up in droves because that's scary. And any person who's done anything that impresses you has fought through fear to make yeah. it happen. Now, I'm not one of those feel the fear and do it anyway kind of people. Mm -hmm. I know that they mean well when they say something like that, but yeah. it's kind of trite and trivializes the fact that we are experiencing a very real feeling of this scares me poopless, right? Like we're experiencing like, oh my gosh, this is getting real and this terrifies me. Yeah. But if you're in equal parts excitement and terror, like your interviews in the Austin uh, television world, right? <laughs> but here's what I want to ask you. You were saying, this is something I should do. Is it something you want to do? Yeah, I want to do it. I'm just nervous and self-conscious about it a little bit. Okay, so, but why do you want to do it? Um, I want, because it's I, I legitimately have a passion to teach people about travel. Right. Yeah. And to help them build their travel businesses and make them bigger and make them better. It's not even just the level of get my agency some exposure, but it's as an advocate in the travel industry, I want to always be elevating the status of travel agents, travel designers, and, and you know, just kind of pushing that and helping educate consumers on why they should use travel agents. So I know like in my heart, the place is good and what I need to push and get out there. And I'm already established at that in the as the industry, but to have a platform where now I can go out and talk to consumers directly, I mean, I'm excited about it, but I'm horrified at the same time a little bit. <laughs> right? No, I love that you're willing to share, and thank you for letting me coach you on the spot. I can't help myself. Yeah, but, I love it. I love it. It's all good. Really, what I'm oh, seeing coaches too. It's so true. Right. But <laughs> what I'm seeing is that why you want to do it and what you're afraid of are not the same thing. Yeah. Why you want to do it is because it gives you a bigger platform so that more people can hear what you're really passionate about spreading. You get yeah. to take your message and spread it in a way that you normally can't. You, I mean, as much as we love our live streaming, it's not the same as showing up in people's television sets. It's just not. Yeah. It's another level. It's another layer to it. So your reasons for doing this are really about your message and about others. And yeah. your fears are about you right? You're afraid, you're self-conscious, there's all this other stuff. But if you ask yourself, are you afraid to share that message? Are you no. afraid that that message is no good, right? You're no. not. Yeah. So if you connect those dots and you notice how Hilda's kind of twisting it, mm -hmm. right? Hilda's making it about you when the reason you want to do it isn't about you. Right. Then yep. you can call BS on Hilda's nonsense and say, you know what? This is something yeah. I want to do. And yes, I'm scared, but I can get those butterflies in my stomach to fly in formation long enough to rock this out. Yes. And from experience, I know every time you face that fear and get past it, it leads you to the next big 
expression, the next big thing. I can't tell you how many times I've said yes to something I didn't really want to do, but I got there and I did it and it led to another opportunity and then another opportunity. And then, <laughs> so it's like sometimes just the saying yes, no matter how scared you are, it's moving past it teaches you one lesson, but then the universe kind of rewards you by saying, okay, yeah, when you step out of your comfort zone, look at how much is out here. Right. <laughs> there's a there's a new level, new devil. Have you heard that phrase before? New no, level, new no, devil? I haven't. It's a real. It's I, I love that phrase because it's so true. As you ratchet up to the new level, it takes all of this work with you and Hilda battling it out so that you can get ready for that next thing. So for you, it's going on TV on Monday, right? Yeah. So once you get to that level, you've dealt with the devil of Hilda. She has to get sneakier. She has to get more clever and more creative on ways to yeah. screw with you because she's obviously not able to keep you from live streaming anymore. She's not able to keep you to get keep you off of camera. Right. But now you're not controlling the camera. So she's like, oh, let me turn that into something. That's <laughs> let me shut this it. down real quick. Yeah. Right. And so then you put yourself in a situation where you're not in control of the camera, but you are in control of you. And you realize, hey, I can handle this. Mm -hmm. Then there's she's going to be like, darn it. I got to come up with something new. I need new material to keep her from going to the next level. So that's why I'm saying when I started working on this book, I thought we were out to kill her. And the truth is that's not at all what it is. What we're out to figure out is how to raise our awareness when she's piping up and shorten the amount of time that she can convince us to squander our potential. Yeah. So that's the whole game. What we want to do is become very friendly with Hilda, recognize when she's uttering her BS, call her on it and shorten the amount of time that she's able to sabotage you. Yes. That's the whole game. Absolutely. And once you do that, it's like, I can change the world. And she's going to pop and recognizing, like you said, she's never going to be a hundred percent gone. Like you, you have to figure out how to live in this cohesive space with her where you keep her in check. Right. Right. And, you know, fear is a good thing. It keeps us from stepping out in the street and, you know, running into a truck. But when it comes to holding you back from your potential or your best expression of, of what you want to accomplish in this lifetime or your goals or passion or whatever, how to how to get her back in her box or her place where you can still operate in on full cylinder and and move forward. So exactly I, because when she's loud, you're doing something that matters. I, I can't yeah. say that enough. Because a lot of us feel like, oh my gosh, I'm still hearing from my inner critic. There must be something wrong with me. I say there's something right with you. If you're still hearing from your inner critic and you're still producing great results, yep. you're winning. And she's gonna keep coming at you. Again, she's quiet if you're sitting on your on your duff doing nothing. Yeah. Well, then you got nothing to do. She's she's eating bonbons with you on the couch watching. <laughs> she's like, this is good. I like this. Hey, we're happy. I'll leave you alone. But then meanwhile, that knock at the door is like, I'm not going away. Your passion is still here. I know that there's more inside. And that little voice, it's like, well, if this person can do it, I should be able to do it. Or I've always wanted to do that or whatever the case is. So exactly. it's, it's, you know, it's that double edged sword that we always, that path you walk and, and getting effective with managing this mindset really is what it comes down to is the ability to come into your greatness or to stay status quo eating bonbons like you said on the couch with Hilda so where do you want to sit and I I did a video earlier this week I don't know if people saw it or not but it the whole premise of the video was like I grew up my mom was very ill when I was young so I grew up at 10 years old in hospitals because they couldn't figure out what she had. And she had this really rare muscle disease and she had to learn how to walk again and go to the bathroom by herself, just crazy stuff. So, but from being 10 years old and living in the hospital for months and months and months at a time, I look, I re had to realize, I look at the world differently than most people. Meaning I always understood from 10 years old that tomorrow's not promised. Yeah. I always understood that next week or next month, might never come. So when I, when I talk to someone on the phone or we are coaching people and they're like, Oh, someday I'll do that. Or like someday doesn't compute with me. Cause like someday could, it might never come. <laughs> like So in my core, that's a part of my journey and what I share with people to push them, you know, like if you, if you wait a year and do it, all right, whatever. But like, if you do it now, a year from now, you could be in Tahiti with the wind blowing through your hair and having your travel business pay for your lifestyle or whatever. So it's one of those things where I love the, the introduction of Hilda into this story because it gives people a tool and a resource to kind of like, 
uh, we'll be recommending your book for sure as we talk to people because it is a hard jump to get over. But you're like, don't ignore that knock on the door. Like the sooner you go after your bliss and your passion, stuff starts to unfold. Your life starts to happen. And then it's like miracles just kind of like come out of the, the woodwork, right? <laughs> In terms of those pieces. So yeah, so beautiful, beautiful thing. I want to I want, before we tell everyone about where to find the book, because I know everyone's going to want it. It's amazing. Everybody should go out and buy it today and read it <laughs> three times because everybody needs Hilda in, uh, to understand. I want to talk about, we always ask our guests to share a couple of vacation things. So I'm, I'm torn on which one to talk about, like your love of Disney or your best cruise ever. So you pick. In well, terms let's of talk Disney. Let's start with yes. Simple. Oh right. my god! You know, right. I, I have my I have my grape soda shirt on today. Yes, I love up, so. up. I love up. Okay, so I moved to Florida to Gainesville, Florida, when I was ten, nine oh, or ten, nice. and so you, Disney World was two hours south of us. Yeah, and <laughs> it took a while till I got there. Like I didn't get there till like the eighth grade or something. But yeah. once I was there, like. The, Mickey bit me, you know, it You're was like, I'm home. What's happening? It was me and Mickey forever. And it's so funny. Um, my wife, she's also from, she's from South Florida. So she went yeah. to visit the mouse all the time. And, you know, we always say that Florida is pretty much old people in the mouse. Like that's, yeah. <laughs> um, but we were all about the mouse and we went to Disney world quite a bit when we were, you know, in college and all that stuff. But now that we live in Los Angeles, we are those crazy pass holder Disneyland people, and uh, we can't get enough. Yeah, we can't get enough. We do not have children. You need to know that detail. <laughs> we don't have children now. Uh, I think it's socially acceptable when you have children to go to Disney all the time, but when you don't, it's kind of weird. No, I totally get that. You know why? Okay, so little story from my life. When I was younger, and you know. I was, you know, you know how you would have the spree, the pre-screen when you would talk to a potential significant other, right? So oh, sure. I was out one, you know, and it's like, you know, do you have a job? Do you have a car? Do you not live with your mom? You know, like, do you smoke? Like it was all this stuff. Like everybody has their own list. I have my list. Well, on my list, like the money question on my list was, all right, if you were going on vacation tomorrow, where would you go? And I was, oh, baby, I would take you to Miami. Oh, we fly off to Zebo. Oh, so the night I met my husband, he's... <laughs> He passed all the questions, right? We get to the last questions. I'm like, all right, if you're getting on a plane tomorrow, where would you go? And he's like, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I would go to Disney World. And I was like, ding, 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 we have a winner. We went to Disney at least three or four times before we got married. And we got married in Disney World. In the mm -hmm. Yes, we got married at the Grand Floridian, the wedding pavilion, the whole thing yes. like you see on TV. It was, people ask you like, oh, what, what was the greatest day of your life? And, you know, people are like, oh, when I had my kids. I'm like, no, it was like the day I got married at Disney. My kids are like, you're a terrible mom. I'm like, I, I love you. That's in a different space. But in terms of days that are about me, that was the day. So, yes. I well, guess you know, from a travel perspective, you know, Meredith and I, uh, started dating in 1997. Nice. Do the math. All right. But in 1997, this is way before gay marriage was a term. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And so being a lesbian couple in Florida, <laughs> going out to dinner on Valentine's Day was tough. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it, tougher on the gay men than the lesbians, but still. Yeah. But at Disney in 1997, yeah. we were treated just like we are in 2018. Yeah. And so that really took it to another level. Too. It's like a safe place, like the pink triangle, right? <laughs> Very strange. And you wouldn't expect it because Disney yeah. is known for being all Americana family. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that it has always been a safe place where gay people are treated just like everybody else. Yeah. Since at least the 90s, because that's when I came out. I don't know about before then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> since the 90s, it really made it a special place. And, you know, when we went there for like our first anniversary, Mm -hmm. We got to just like any other couple would. And yeah. so that right there, it's not just about the Mickey and the standing in lines and the, the yeah. mini ears and the, you know, candy corn and all this stuff. It's also about the fact that it's a place where everybody is welcome. Yep. And I don't think a lot of people know that about Disney or, or associate that with Disney. Yeah. And, and how would they, how would they know unless they were a first hit? So I love that you shared that because we have, when we work with people to, customize and niche their businesses, 
one of the new niches is travel agencies that reach out to the LGBT community, right? right? And so knowing like, you know what, Jamaica's probably not a fit for you, but let me tell you some other places that are amazing to go to. So we, the community needs to hear those things and be listening to their consumer and their audience. So I think it's beautiful that you shared that today because as people expand in their networks and travel, we all, no matter who your consumer is, you need to understand keenly who they are and what, because we want everyone to have that amazing vacation experience. So it's so great that since the 90s, that has been your experience. Now, how did you get from Florida to California? Tell me that story. Oh, good quick. grief. Well, we, we took the longest dra- direction ever. We don't really um, go on two week vacations to cities. We like move there for three to five years and make it a hometown. So yeah. we like to make the joke that we collect hometown. So after we lived in Florida, we, we met in undergrad. We've been together forever. We moved to the Washington DC area. Then we moved to Boston and became Red Sox fans. And then we moved to New York. So that was a bad idea (laughs) and lived in New York city for six years. And now we're in Los Angeles for the last three because what I, I, we love the big city life. We just do, but I also love turning it into a hometown, becoming regulars at a brunch spot or a watering hole and like really experiencing all these different cities. I don't know how long we'll be in LA. Um, my wife is really enjoying her job, um, yeah. but our sites are set on San Diego next. Oh, nice. So, but this is our first time on the West Coast. Yeah. We've always lived, like we've bounced around a lot, but we've always been on the East Coast. So it's weird to not be in the same time zone as all our friends. Yeah. Have you guys made it down to La Jolla yet? Um, oh my gosh, yes. I love La Jolla. Oh my gosh, it's so stunning. There's a place called Wind and Sea Beach. Yep. Um, that I think is the most perfect beach that I've ever experienced in my really? life. Really? So nice. special. And then the other place that I think everybody needs to go to is Coronado Island. Yes. Yeah. As well. Um, yeah. There's that beautiful um, hotel. Uh, what is it? The Hotel Del Hotel Coronado. Coronado. It's very reminiscent of the Grand Floridian. Speaking right, right. It feels like the Grand Floridian in a strange yeah. way, but it's from the movie Some Like It Hot. That's where yeah. Some Like It Hot was filmed. That space right there. It's just, it's really magical. You feel like you're in old Hollywood, even yeah. though you're three and a half hours south of Hollywood. <laughs> it's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. And next time you guys go to La Jolla, check out La Valencia. We're, I don't have it up yet, but we're going to have a full two on our YouTube channel. We're going to have a full review. I was, I've, I've known about the reputation of La Valencia. It's the pink hotel in La Jolla. You can't miss it. It's like right there. It um, backs to where the, are you familiar with the back, the Dr. Seuss, the Lorax movie? Sure. where they talk about the truffula trees. So Dr. Seuss actually lived in La Jolla and the actual tree that inspired the truffula tree and the concept for that book is right there still in La Jolla. So you can go take your picture with it and La Valencia is kind of right there. You get walking distance and it's a boutique hotel, but it is just so quaint and so beautiful. Again, our review's not up yet, but it's going to be on our um, YouTube channel, on the Tripsy Travel YouTube channel, not the Cindy Williams coaching channel. Um, okay. But when you guys get down there, definitely take a visit there. And then right across the street, is the they have the Dr. Seuss Gallery, which is one of the only galleries in the country that will sell you the Dr. Seuss uh, pictures, which, hang on, let me, hang on one sec. I did not plan this one moment. <laughs> There's a little show and tell moment happening on this oh, live stream. Show right. So, <gasps> this is, we actually got this at the doc. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. But this is an actual piece from the gallery. So, we got it. It's the kind of the rendering of the original. I'm trying to move this in. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. I had so something that was there. I, I will definitely check it out. We're looking at going back down to San Diego for Labor Day. So, Oh, nice. Yeah. So fun. And the zoo and all that good stuff is super fun. Do the VIP tour on the zoo. Okay. I'm turning into travel agent Cindy now. So I'm going to back this up. (laughs) You see how easy that happens? Because I can talk about travel all day. (laughs) I love it. So I want to direct everyone to where, first of all, if you guys have trouble with your inner demons and your Hilda, (laughs) go follow Jenny on her social pages. So on social media, you can find her on at coach Jenny and her site, her website is coach Jenny. And that's J E N N I E.com. 
So go follow her. Do you, if you have a link, Jenny, if you forward it to me, I'll post, like, do people buy your book on Amazon or where do they get your yeah, book? So my book is on Amazon. You can get it in Kindle. You can get it in paperback. And I also did an audio book on Audible and I oh, read nice. the book so I could read it to you if you would like. Yes, yes I love it. that. Um, so yeah, the book is available in all three formats. You can find it on Amazon. If you just search for Hilda and coach Jenny, cause there's also like a, kids book called Hilda the Troll that'll come up. <laughs> Not the <laughs> one. Different Troll. Different, different troll. troll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, if you go to Amazon, you can find that. But I'll also share the link with you. And you can also learn more about the book at HildaTheBook.com. That's my site for HildaTheBook.com. Nice. Well, thank you for joining us today, Jenny. I have really just appreciate you coming on, helping uh, those that are stuck in the travel industry and the world that we live in to get past their Hilda so they can move forward and supersize their travel businesses and do everything they were hoping to accomplish there. So thank you for joining us. If you guys are seeing this video later, click a little CTR and uh, follow Jenny on YouTube too. I know you're working on your YouTube domination as we are. So follow yeah. us both on YouTube. That would be great. And uh, I love you so much. I'll see you in Disney right, sometime, you. I'm sure. Thank you so much. All right, I, I'm going to click here. Thanks, Jenny. I appreciate you. Bye, guys. Bye.